we've traveled to Grimsey Island in Iceland, inside the Arctic Circle. And as you can see, there is an abundance of life. We have Arctic terns, puffins, orcas, whales, but the world wasn't always like this. 252 million years ago, during the mass extinction, volcanoes erupted on Pangaea, releasing hundreds of billions of tons of CO2 into the atmosphere. This change would change the atmosphere for all of the life living. The seas would become toxic and poisonous in the city, and 96% of all life in the oceans would be wiped out. 70% of all the life on land would also be killed. But nature has a way of fighting back. And this set the stage for a new dawn, the dawn of the dinosaurs. With the amount of CO2 now in the atmosphere, global temperatures started to rise, which meant plant life on the land started to thrive, but animals also needed to adapt to change. Not only was the earth slightly hotter, but landforms that didn't exist, like cliff faces like these behind us, and new rock formations started to occur. This was also the age of plate tectonics, when continents buckled and separated causing land masses all around the world to look completely different. This set the stage for an evolutionary change like never before. Let's go and find out more about it. So 250 million years ago, the Earth started to change significantly. This was the age of the dinosaurs. And after the greatest extinction that ever occurred on the planet, life was set to change forever. And we have found Marcos once again how are you? Hey Gavin, excellent. Talking about extinctions and nature bouncing back, look at the life on these bird cliffs here. Amazing abundance of life. Where are we? Yeah. We are in northern Iceland in, a, in an island called Grimsey Island that it lies just in the middle of where the Arctic Circle wow. intersects our planet. And it's amazing how it's so cold but life is so abundant. Let's go back 250 million years. The mass extinction is over, Pangaea is formed. What's happening? So at that time, of course, this big amount of volcanic eruptions made a lot of life on Earth extinct. Life on Earth had a bit of a reset and a start over. So a lot of life forms that didn't exist back then started populating our planet. This is what we call adaptive radiations. They have the Earth for themselves. And the ones that were successful in this era were the reptiles in the beginning. And then these reptiles diversified and made also the dinosaurs. So why were the dinosaurs so successful? We know there's so many different types, the T-Rex, the Diplodocus. You know, these are amazing creatures. What made them so dominant? So again, they had a few adaptations that were excellent for them to conquer the different environments. So they have this locomotion adaptations, their feeding adaptations, there were dinosaurs that were herbivores, some dinosaurs that were carnivores, and they ruled our planet and the different environments. And talking about Pangaea, Pangaea was in the beginning all together and they adapted to that, but then it started separating and they were adapted to different places in different ways. So Pangaea is this supercontinent, a mass of granite and other types of rocks all congeal to make one huge landmass. But the volcanoes that are erupting and changing the atmosphere and the landmass around us, how did they impact this? What was, what caused Pangaea to split? Yeah, so what happens with big, big supercontinents is that the heat that is inside our planet cannot escape. So at some point, just when you're baking a cake, it starts cracking up in the middle, Pangaea was the same. The heat was trying to escape and at some point it drifted away and it pulled apart that big continent. 
And those gases that poured into the atmosphere with all this volcanism, they warmed our planet up. So during the Mesozoic, during the era of dinosaurs, our planet was very, very warm. Wow, okay, a lot warmer than it is today. A lot warmer than it is today. And that's because the gases had changed in the atmosphere, causing this greenhouse effect and other forms that cause the Earth to heat up. Mostly that was the reason. Right, now, dinosaurs are famous for being on land. We've all seen the videos and the images of them eating from trees and the T-Rex chasing down its prey in the jungle. Did they live in other places? Were there dinosaurs that lived in the sea? And were there any dinosaurs that lived in the sky? Yeah, there are actually reptiles and dinosaurs that were colonizing different environments. So again, we're starting from one environment, one supercontinent that broke apart and that meant many oceans, many different settings where dinosaurs can colonize. So they had all the place for themselves that they adapted to different conditions. So reptiles flew over Earth, huge reptiles were on the oceans, very scary indeed if you look at them, and dinosaurs on every single place that you can imagine. Yeah, one of those is the Megalodon. For what example. an amazing creature. Yeah. As we said, about 150 to 200 million years of evolution. Wow. So Pangaea started to break up. This supercontinent filled with dinosaurs, Diplodocus, all these reptiles, T-Rex, started to separate. Volcanoes erupted, fault lines occurred, and it started to float apart like jigsaw pieces in a jigsaw puzzle. Did the dinosaurs just float off like a, a boat or a floating iceberg? No, that's what's interesting. Being that Pangaea was separating, different environments were developing. So at some point, this evolution branched out and different life forms appear in different places. And this is one of the ways geologists can tell that this, this was connected. For example, with plant life. When we have continents that are together, this plant can bridge between different places. Once these continents drift apart, in a way, this can no longer exist. So different evolutions happen in different places. So when, so when we look in the stone, for example, on the east coast of South America, and we look in the stone on the west coast of Africa, we can see similarities. What clues lie in the stone that tell us that these two were once connected? So a lot of these are actually fossils, old life forms that existed in a similar area and region, but then again they were drifted apart later on by plate tectonics. This also can happen in rock evidence. Rocks are very, very similar. Once once together, they were separated. Wow, so really, once again, written in the rock is the history of our planet. This is the study of geology, really. It this is. is why it's so interesting. Now this week, we want you to delve into this idea of the interconnected continents. There are so many continents, countries all around the planet now that have coastlines. And in those coastlines are rocks, sandstone, granite, igneous rocks that tell us clues about how these continents were connected. We want you to have a look at the work below and see if you can find clues and links between continents that prove that they were once connected when they were all Pangaea. Marcos? It's been amazing to have you this week here in the Arctic Circle. See you next time.